All right, hopefully you finished the pretile patterns. If you struggled on it and weren't sure what to put on some of them, that's fine too. We're gonna to kind of go through each of them. So here's tile pattern two. So you notice that figure zero was blank. It didn't mean there was nothing in figure zero. It just means that you needed to fill it in. And what I saw was on this one, it looked like they always had something at the end here. So these four were always at the end, but it's the middle. It's almost like a, a flower opening up. So this is like the bud and then the flower starts to open up uh, from here. So in figure one, we see that first growth in there. And then here, it still has one, but now it added three more. But it's not like it's adding the same amount each time like the previous one. Now, if you look at it, the figure number is equal to the square in the center. So like the figure two, it's a two by two square in the center. Figure three would be a three by three square in the center. Figure four, I made it into a four by four square. So this is a different time of growth because we're not growing by the same amount each time. We grew, we grew by one here, three here, five here, and seven here. So it looks like we're growing by two more each time. So one to three, that's a growth of two more than the previous one, three to five, it's two more. So it's growing by the same amount and then two more each time. And you can also look at it as just a growth of the square in the middle, the square is getting bigger. The uh, length of the square is equal to the figure number. This is a one by one square, two by two square, three by three square, four by four square. So your uh, tiles would be four, five, eight, 13, 20, 29. And then here, you would have gone ahead and made it like this. I went ahead and just uh, drew the red line to connect them just to see what kind of shape it's doing because it's much different from the last one. The last one is linear. This one obviously is not making a line. So going back to describing. So in this section right here, you should be describing the pattern. And we're going to describe it the same way that we described the last pattern. What's its shape? Is it increasing or decreasing? What does it look like the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts are? Are there any values that don't work uh, for the x and y-intercepts? So looking at this one, what's its uh, shape? It's definitely a curve this time instead of a line. Uh, we have to also look at, uh, what was the other questions? <laughs> we have to look at, is it increasing or decreasing from left to right? From left to right, the y values are getting bigger, so it's increasing. Uh, next question would be, what are the intercepts? It looks like the y-intercept right here is at uh, 4. What's the x-intercept? Well, it doesn't look like it makes it to the x-axis. doesn't make it down here, so there is no x-intercept in this particular, for what we got so far. Uh, are there any values that don't work? Well, it looks like this one isn't going to go negative over here. So it doesn't look like we're going to have any negatives. Uh, and in fact, since this is an x squared right here, it looks like if I plugged in a negative number, it actually start going back up. So some of the values that are not possible, it doesn't look like the y values will ever get smaller than 4. For our x values, we're going to just say that it can be 0 or greater. And if we're looking at this as being a discrete function, we might say that uh, we can't have uh, fractions in it, maybe. But we don't know. We don't know if there's more to this uh, pattern or not. But for right now, we'll say that. So pattern number three. This one's a little bit of a trickier pattern. Um, and what we see here is that figure zero, I've got three vertical and then one diagonally right there. And then what it looks like happens is I add three more vertical and one more diagonal. So it looks like the pattern doubled. And then here, so I had, on the previous pattern, I had uh, two of these threes and then two of the diagonal ones. And then I added two more of the vertical ones and two more of the diagonal ones. So I doubled the size of my pattern each time. So on the next one, I used to have four vertically, and now I have eight vertically. So I'm doubling my pattern right there. And then here I used to have four of them diagonally. Now I have eight diagonally because I'm doubling the pattern each time. And our equation for that would be y equals 4 times 2 to the x power. 
we call these exponential functions. Okay, graphing it, it doesn't even fit on this graph. Uh, here's 0, 4, here's 1, 8, here's 2, 16, 32, 64 is off the graph, and 128 is way off the graph. So what I see is that there's a different kind of pattern here. Looks like these are all powers of 2. This is 2 to the second power, this is 2 to the third, 2 to the fourth, 2 to the fifth, 2 to the sixth power, 2 to the seventh power. So it looks like powers of 2, and that's what this is keeping track of. 2 to the x is keeping track of how many powers of 2 you have. So how would I describe it? Well, I'd definitely say it's curve. I'd say from left to right it's an increasing function because the y values are getting bigger from left to right. I would say that the intercept over here is at 3 or four, sorry. Um, it doesn't look like we're gonna go negative on this one. So our, uh, it doesn't look like it's ever gonna have any x-intercept. Uh, and then again, what values don't look like would be possible? I don't know, it doesn't look like it's gonna be possible to have, uh, at least on this type of chart, any y value smaller than four. And doesn't look like we're allowed to have negative x values because according to this figure uh, if we're doubling I mean you could cut these into fractions if you want to but we're just not going to do that. Uh, pattern 4 this is a different one this is an inverse function here 48 over x you might not have seen that before. Figure 0 is undefined why is it undefined because x is the figure number if you put a 0 there you're saying that you're giving out 48 pieces of nothing, and there are no 48 pieces of nothing. So that would be undefined. It's impossible. There's 48 squares in the first one. You can just do 6 by, uh, six by 8. 6 times 8 is 48. There's 24 in the next one, 16 in the next one, 12 in the next one, 9.6 in that one. So looking at its graph here, I accidentally messed up there. Don't look at that one. Oh, we'll cover it up. Oh, now you don't see it. I did it perfectly. Now on this graph here, you see it doing this. So we've got another curve going on. But this one, is it increasing or decreasing? This one is a decreasing graph because as you go from left to right, the y values are getting smaller. Uh, what are the intercepts? Well, this one, it doesn't look like it will ever get to the y-intercept. Y and it also will never get to the x-intercepts. So there's no x-intercepts and there's no y-intercepts. This one would always stay in the first quadrant. If you did negative numbers, you could have the third quadrant too, but that's a whole other story. All right, so uh, uh, what are the numbers that are not possible? Well, it doesn't look like it's possible to have y values uh, that are negative. And it doesn't look like it's possible to have x values that are negative since everything stays in this first quadrant right there. All right. So at this point, we're going to do what's called a learning log. Uh, every once in a while in a lesson, you're going to get a learning log where you're supposed to kind of get all of your, uh, all your thoughts together for what you've done. So this one is a learning log that's going to ask the question how to describe the characteristics of a, of a graph. So write a list of questions to ask yourself when deciding how to describe a graph. So later on in other units or le other lessons, it might say, hey, describe this graph. Well, what's it looking for? Well, we've talked about you know shape. We've talked about increasing, decreasing. We've talked about continuous or discrete. So list those questions that we've talked about previously in this lesson. And that way you can go back every once in a while and say, okay, it's asking me to describe this. So these are the things that I'm supposed to use to describe. All right. Last thing, methods and meanings. So on your homework, you're going to get some things about angles. So an angle is made up of two rays. Rays start at a point and go in one direction forever. So an angle has a ray going out here, a ray going over here. And where the two rays have a common endpoint, that's called the vertex. So our vertex is here, and then the rays go off, and that makes an angle. If you have an acute angle, that's an angle where it's less than 90 degrees. A right angle 
is an angle equal to 90 degrees. And notice this little box in here, that box indicates that it is 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is an angle that is uh, more than 90 degrees, but less than 180, so between 90 and 180. A straight angle is a straight line, and that has 180 degrees in it. And then a circular angle that goes all the way around, circles have 360 degrees in them. So a circular angle would be 360 degrees. All right, that is the end of 1.1.3. Do your homework. Enjoy.